Okay, guys. I'm excited about this message because it's going to be the answer that, that many of you have been waiting on, or at least some of you have been waiting for. Uh, the name of this sermon is going to be called The Hokey Pokey. Hokey Pokey. Many of y'all know that song from childhood. I'll explain in just a moment why I'm naming this Hokey Pokey, but let me just explain who this is for and what this is about. I explained at the start of this year that this was a year of new beginnings, 2018, and I talked about uh, how the number eight, biblically speaking, means new beginnings. And one of the examples I used to explain this was the days of the week, and I said, okay, you know, the first day of the week, Sunday, is the start of something, right? The start of the week. And you have the seven days of the week, and then day number eight starts a new week. So it's a new start. You had a start, but now the next Sunday is the new start, a new beginning. It's like, let's say, uh, let's start this over. It's like God said, let's start this over, a whole new week to just start it all over again. So you have a beginning or a start. And then you have a new beginning, a new chance, right? Okay, so I explained that this would be a year of opportunities, of great opportunities for people, but I said for a lot of folks, it's actually going to be a year where opportunities that have passed by already will suddenly return. In other words, maybe last year or the year before that or the year before that, some opportunity that you wanted so bad made its way to you, but you missed out for whatever reason. Maybe you got afraid and you freaked out, or you know what I mean? You got nervous, you backed up from it or something, but something played out that caused you to miss out on something, something big, or maybe you didn't realize just how big it was going to be until you walked in it. And I said, this, this will be a year not only for, for big opportunities for some people, but for others, a lot of what's going to happen is old opportunities are going to be made anew again so that you have a new chance, not a chance, but a new chance as something you previously had a chance at and you screwed it up or missed out on it. Okay, so with that said, I really feel like somebody needs this and, and, and this, this won't be for everybody. But there may be some people that really need this. And I know there's different uh, avenues that people uh, used to listen to me. Some people, you know, they check out my messages through Facebook. Some people through YouTube. I know a lot of my views, the majority of them come from my online website, calpowerministries.com. So I know there's, there's different ways, and I don't know all of who tunes in to listen or watch my videos. So I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know who all needs this. But I know it's probably not for everybody, but I know there are some people, and I'm here to say in this particular message, that I strongly believe that soon, surely before this month is up, there are going to be some of you who you're going to be given opportunity, and for some of you, it will be an opportunity that has passed that you are now going to get a chance at, a stab at again. So let me say that just one more time. Here soon for some of you, that moment is coming or one of many moments that may play out this year, but, there, but this is going to be one of the times of an opportunity for some of you or for others, a second chance at an old opportunity that is now being made anew. So get ready, it's coming soon. And what I'm doing in this message is not only letting you know that, but also to say, it's, it's, it's really just to pose this question, what are you going to do when the opportunity arises? What are you going to do when the opportunity arises? Are you going to go all in? Or are you going to play hokey pokey again? Because playing hokey pokey is what caused you to miss out on this last time. For those of you who this is going to be a, a, a second chance at this opportunity. You played hokey pokey last time. <laughs> and if you play it again, number one, you don't know when this opportunity will ever come again. And number two, you, you should also consider the, the reality that you might not get another opportunity at this particular thing again.
There may be other opportunities for other things, but for this specific thing coming up, you don't know if you're going to get the opportunity again. And if you do, if you miss out on it again, if you do get a, a third chance, you don't even know when that would even be. It might be years from now. You never know. So you don't want to miss out is what I'm saying. So I'm getting you ready now with this question. What are you going to do? Are you going all in or are you going to play hokey pokey? Now, for those following along in scripture, I'm starting out in Exodus. I'm going to be going to a few different spots, but starting in Exodus chapter four, if you want to go ahead and turn there. But while you're getting there, if you're following along, let me kind of help you out here with some uh, some imagery here to help you see what it is that I'm saying. The song, the hokey pokey, that many of us learned as a kid, it goes kind of like this. You put your left hand in, you put your left hand out, you put your left hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, you put your right hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, put your left foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your right foot in, you put your, <laughs> y'all get it. <laughs> now I'm just having fun. I could have quit doing that already, but I was just having fun. But I, let me, let me get back to the message. Let me get back to the message. Okay. <laughs> I was having some fun there. But anyway, so the hokey pokey, all right? So basically what's happening in the song is you're putting yourself in something and you kind of back out but then you try it again and you put a little bit more effort in right shake it all about but what do you do you back out of it again and then what you turn yourself around you turn yourself away from the situation and that's what some of you did in the past with certain opportunities for something big for something great to happen in your life You played hokey pokey. You, listen, you, you wanted it, you believed for it, and you got close to it, and it was like you were kind of putting yourself in a little bit, but, but when it really came down to it, when, when the pressure was really on and you really had to get all in, what did you do? You, you, you backed out. You put your hand in, but then you put it back out. And then what did you end up doing? You turned yourself around. In other words, you, you, you got scared and you walked away. You backed up like, oh, no. And so I'm here to simply ta say that the only turning away you need to be doing with God right now really is repentance. Because that's what it means to repent, right? Not just saying, I'm sorry, God, but saying, Lord, you know, I, 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 I turn away from this. I, I don't want to do this again. So, so for some of you. All you really have to do right now is to have a, a repentive heart about turning away from, from him in the past. In other words, it's like saying, God, I'm going to turn away from turning away from you. <laughs> I'm repenting from turning away you in these opportunities that you've given me that I've wanted so bad. Lord, I repent. I turn from turning from you so so that's really all that it is you've got to see that you've messed up and you've got to say okay in other words you got to look at reality but not beat yourself up over it because if you do that you're going to be all insecure and then when the opportunity arises itself again you'll miss out on it again because you've been too busy beating yourself up about last time so acknowledge it but then say okay lord i i, I screwed up I know, I know I screwed up on this. I'm ready for the, 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 the next go around. I'm ready for the next chance. I'm ready to just go all in. I'm not going to play hokey pokey and kind of put my hand in there a little bit and then pull it back out and then kind of go at it from this angle and shake it around and then pull back out and then just turn around and walk off. I'm not doing that. This time I'm going all in. All in. Not just kind of. I want to go all in. No more hokey pokey. No more poking at it. I'm ready to just stab right on in. So that's the mindset that you have to have. Now, I know this is going to sound weird, but this is the example that, that came to my mind 
the other night because I was thinking, I was like, what, what would be a good example? And this just instantly came to me. And I know it's going to sound goofy. It's going to sound ridiculous. It's going to sound over the top. You're going to be like, what type of wacky example is this? But just go with me on it, okay? So this is the hypothetical I'm going to give to you. And just, just go with it, okay? All right. So hypothetically speaking, okay, let's say you're somebody and you had this dream for years to, to be like a crocodile hunter, okay? <laughs> and I know some of y'all are thinking, what kind of wacky, you know, dream is that? Just go with me. Just, just, just go with me on it. You really want to do this. And it, it just, it came out of nowhere. Like maybe you weren't even that brave of a person in the past, but all of a sudden this braveness rose up in you one day and you were like, man, I, you know, I want to be like one of them people I see on TV, just going out in the wild and going on adventures and just wrestling with bears and, and, and crocodiles and, you know, uh, jumping on elephants and just, you know, <laughs> I just want to do something crazy, but, but I, but I know I can do it. It's in me. I got to do it. Right. <laughs> And you've never done this before, but there's something in you that's just like, I, I, I know I got to do this. This is, this is what I'm meant to do. I just got to do it. And you tell people and they look at you like you're crazy, but you just, you, it's just in you. It just won't go away, right? Now, let's say, let's pretend that Steve Irwin is still alive. And I know some of y'all that probably, that name probably rings a bell, but for those it doesn't, Steve Irwin, he died, I think, about 12 or so years ago. But Steve Irwin, his nickname was the Crocodile Hunter. And he was the guy, now, now some of y'all probably remember who he is, he was that Australian guy. He had his own TV show called The Crocodile Hunter, and he was the Crocodile Hunter. And what he did was, y'all know the dude, he had on them, you know, them little old shorts. <laughs> White dude, blonde hair, Australian accent, had the little old shorts and the boots, and he'd just be out in the wild messing with animals and not hurting them, but just like, you know, he would get up real close to animals that other people would be kind of afraid to get close to, and he would get up close to them, and the cameraman would come up, and he'd just be talking about the animal, and he'd just be looking at it and talking about it and petting it and all kinds of stuff. He wasn't scared of nothing. He was just happy. He was just happy to get close to some wild animals. He was just excited about it. And you could tell it wasn't just something he was doing for the money. You could tell it was in his heart. Like, that was his passion. He was all about animals and wildlife, and he wanted you to learn about them and just <laughs> that was his thing but his trademark was when he got out there and he wrestled crocodiles and he was brave he wasn't scared he was he was happy about it it was it just brought joy to his heart to, to wrestle a crocodile it didn't make no sense how happy it made him but that just he just loved it it wasn't about trying to be tough in front of people he didn't genuinely want to hurt the animals he just that's just what he did that's just who he was and what he did and it was just a joy to watch him because he had such a joy in what he did. So let's say he's still alive, right? And that's your, that's your hero. That's who you look up to. You, you watch the show, Crocodile Hunter, and you're like, that's me. That's me right there. I can see me doing it, right? So you want this so bad, right? You want it, you want it, you want it, right? And then one day you're watching TV and Steve Irwin is giving this interview and he's like, you know, I'm getting close to a point in my life where I think it's almost time for me to retire, but I want this legacy to live on. So I need to find the right person to come and take my spot on my TV show. And you're sitting there and you're flipping out and you're thinking, oh man, you know, this would be awesome. This would be so cool if I could write. <laughs> you're having your little moment. And you just, you just, you just want it so bad, right? So all of a sudden, you know, one night you're praying about it, da, 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 da. Oh, God, that would be so awesome, God, right? And then one day you wake up to a knock on your door. And you go to the door and you open it and it's Steve Irwin standing at your door. And he's got his, he's talking to you in his accent. Hey, mate. <laughs> hey, mate. Come, come wrestle these crocodiles with me. Right? <laughs> and you look behind him because he's pointing to something going on behind him. And you look behind him and over in your yard, there's this swimming pool that wasn't even there before. It's this kiddie pool. One of them big 
kiddie pools you get at Walmart. And inside this pool full of water is some crocodiles. And Steve Irwin is standing there. He's talking to you and he's saying, listen, you know, I, I've been doing this show and I'm getting close to retirement, but I wanted somebody to come take my spot. I didn't want the show and the legacy to die down. I got to find somebody and I've been praying on it. And, and God started talking to me. And he told me your name. I don't even know you, but he told me your name and told me where you live. And he told me to come get you and, and, and to see what you got and to come teach you and train you and raise you up in wildlife and in, in wrestling crocodiles. And, and I need you to come out here and show me what you got. And I'm going to teach you and show you how to how to do this. And, 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 and if I see you got the passion for it and if I see, you know, you want to go all in, check this out. I'm going to take you with me on some adventures, get you ready, and, and then we're going to start filming for the next season of the show so you can be in it with me. You can host the show with me, and if you do good, the show is going to be all yours one day because i got to retire. So Steve Irwin is saying all this. You see it's really him. You know it's him. You see the crocodiles. Then you start seeing cameramen just walk up out of nowhere. They got the cameras. They're, they're ready to record. They're ready to, to get this thing going. And so you see your dream right before your eyes. But then you, you look at the crocodiles and you're thinking, oh, man. <laughs> You were ready until you were not ready. <laughs> you were ready, but when, when you came face to face with the opportunity you wanted so long, now you're freaking out. Now you're thinking, oh, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> and you start backing up. And now you just want to close the door in his face. And I'm telling you, you can't close the door on this opportunity again. Go with me to Exodus, chapter 4, starting at the beginning, it says this. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. So, so this is a familiar story. We've looked at it numerous times. I'm sure you've heard it. We know how it played out. God's people, they're in, in slavery to Egypt and God is using a man named Moses. He's getting him ready. He wants to raise him up and get him ready to go and speak to Pharaoh and Pharaoh is the king he's the ruler he's the leader of all the Egyptians and what he says goes and God is saying to Moses hey I want to use you to set my people free and the way that I'm going to have you do this is I'm going to have you talk to these people but also I'm going to have you go straight to Pharaoh be face to face with Pharaoh the ruler of all this and I want you to tell him to let my people go and Moses is really insecure already about just himself as it is. And he's like, what if they don't believe me, Lord? I, I don't know what to do. And so what God's doing is he's getting Moses ready for his big moment. And, and what he's doing is he's, he's having him do something. He's throwing this opportunity his way because if he can overcome this, it will prepare him for the big big moment which is going to pharaoh but he's got to deal with this right here before he before god fully gives him the okay to go to pharaoh so he's saying what's in your hand moses he says a rod and he's like drop it so Mo, uh, moses drops this rod this stick <clears throat> and it turns into a snake and what does moses do he takes off running he turns himself around and he's like nope and, he, <laughs> and he, he starts taking off. He's like, uh-uh. He's like, I ain't standing around to see what God says next. I'm just, I'm finna go. <laughs> and God stops him and he's like, Moses, pick it up by the tail. Put forth your hand, pick it up by the tail. Pick up the snake by the tail. So Moses, he comes back. He 
he picks it up and when he picks it up the snake turns back into a harmless rod again God's like don't run put your hand in go all in and watch what happens Moses because God says hey do this he trusts enough in God to say okay if God's telling me to do this if this is really God if if this is is the real true God almighty powerful God and if he says I can pick this up by the tail I can do it I can pick it up by the tail it's scary it's intimidating but if I can do it if he said if he says I can do it I can do it so that's simply what I'm saying to you is if God sets this before you you're not supposed to look at it as well I don't know if I can do this if God is presenting this for you it's not about you doing something in your own strength it's about doing it in his and the more timid you are and the more insecure you are about it that's actually what gives this situation the advantage because when you do what God says and it all works out people have no choice but to stand back and say okay God this must be of God God must have something to do with this because if he can use that person if that person is doing it God has to be behind it because I remember just a year ago they were too scared to do that they were too scared to do this they were too scared to do that they were too timid I I, I, I went for a long time without even hearing them speak I didn't even know if they could talk they were so shy and bashful now they out here wrestling alligators and uh, fighting lions and tigers and bears oh my <laughs> so so something had to have happened what was going on so it's something that's going to get people's attention because it's you because people don't expect it from you but what that does is it, st- it sets the stage for people to pay attention and question and when that happens it gives you opportunity to say if it was not for the Lord I wouldn't be here doing this it gives you the opportunity to testify and glorify God it brings attention to him so when you wonder why me now you see why you because it's not really about you God may give you what you want but he's looking at the big picture of it's gonna bring glory to me okay so you can't play hokey pokey you've got to go all in now watch this in chapter 7 still in Exodus chapter 7 starting at verse 8 it says and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron his brother saying when Pharaoh shall speak unto you saying show a miracle for you then thou shalt say unto Aaron take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh and it shall become a serpent so that moment was preparing Moses for the big moment that opportunity of will you go all in and pick up the snake will you trust me in other words will you trust me Moses that moment prepared him that opportunity prepared him for the really big moment which is coming face to face with Pharaoh just like if you can get out of the house and get in that pool with them crocodiles and let Steve Irwin show you a thing or two (laughs) then it will prepare you for the big moment when you're in front of the world on TV oh man okay now now you see where I'm going with this it's just it's an opportunity that will propel you to the real big moment okay so it says this and Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh and they did so as the Lord had commanded and Aaron went or sorry Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants and it became a serpent okay 
Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So you might be thinking, well, what happens if the enemy tries to interfere with my big moment? What if people try, jealous people come and try to, try to ruin it, try to, try to outdo me if this is really my moment? What if somebody tries to come and shut, shut it down, ruin a good thing, basically? You have like a, like a, almost like a Cinderella kind of mindset of, well, you know, things were crappy for me in the past, and now it's going to get good suddenly, but, but, but what if? What if? Now, now here comes the Prince Charming, and now here comes the big moment, but, but what if? What if it all just falls apart again? What if I get my hopes up, and then it all, it all just falls apart again, and then all of a sudden things don't play out, and all of a sudden the people that came into my life that loved me and liked me back when, when you know, th there was nobody around to really care, and now I got these people caring. What about when, when, when things fall apart, are these new people going to back up? And now I'm going to be right back where I started at square one with nothing and no one. You've got that mindset of what if? What if I do my part, but what if the enemy does his? What if people that want my opportunity or what I get out of this opportunity, what if they try to come and combat it and I don't know what to do? And we see the answer right here. Moses and Aaron obey God. They go to Pharaoh. They, they drop the rod. It turns into a snake. And the magicians come and then they try to counterfeit it. They try to replicate it, do the same thing. But it said that their rod, the rod of Moses and Aaron, swallowed up the rods of the magicians. That, that snake swallowed up all the other snakes. Shut it down. Totally shut down the enemy's plan. Here's the interesting thing about it. What did Moses or Aaron do to make their rod swallow up the other rods? What does it say in scripture? Nothing. They didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was the simple thing God told them to do. In other words, if you do what God sets in front of you to do, if you take on the opportunity, as long as you're trying, as long as you go all in and you trust God and do what you need to do to the best of your ability, God's got it. God's got it. Some things will happen. Some stuff will play out you didn't even expect. I bet Aaron and Moses were standing there thinking, oh, crap. <laughs> they see all these other rods turning into snakes and they're thinking, oh, man, what are we going to do now? We're, we're outnumbered. It doesn't say what they were thinking or feeling, but you know they got to be like, oh, man. <laughs> but, but what happened? God took care of it. All they had to do was their part. And God did what they couldn't have done, what they didn't know how to do. Okay. Go with me to Joshua 5. This is, this is the attitude you got to have right here. Joshua 5, starting at verse 13. It says, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? 
we see Joshua here and he lifts up his eyes he looks up and there's someone in front of him with a sword and Joshua instead of being afraid and running off he's ready he's like who are you are you on my side whose side are you on he's ready to just go <laughs> you know but he says this he says as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come captain of the Lord of hosts in other words most people will say this is an angel now there are some that will say that that it's God himself in angelic form but the point is it's a heavenly visitation so the guy that's in front of Joshua you got to know he didn't just look like any other guy this was probably you know an intimidating tall you know glowing dude probably <laughs> you know what I mean but but you get my point point is something was before him that could have made him afraid but instead of running he's ready for the challenge And that's what I'm saying to you. You've got to have that mindset. I don't mean the mindset of you ready to, you know, pull a, pull a sword out on God. I'm just saying. <laughs> you, you ain't got to be ready to fight Jesus. I'm just saying that that's the, 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 the bravery, the outgoingness that you have to have, the tenacity to move forward no matter what comes your way, no matter what obstacle comes your way. That's it right there. Let me say this, maybe for some of you, the thing that you're really wanting is to have an experience with God that you never had before. Maybe you want an encounter with God. Maybe the thing that you dreamed of and the thing that you prayed about is to have an encounter with the Lord. I'm not talking about just anything. I'm talking about something supernatural, like seeing him or, or, or hearing his voice or you know, like, like some of the things that we read in the Bible, like a moment just like this. Maybe you want to encounter an angel and, and, and have a conversation with an angel or something, something of that nature. And you've been believing for it. And the question is, how would you respond when the moment happens? You may say, well, what do you mean? I'd be happy. And a lot of people want that. And a lot of people pray for things such as that. But when the moment happens, it's like they freak out. I was watching, uh, I don't know if y'all know, any of you know who Jesse DePlantis is, but I was watching this episode of uh, Sid Roth's at Supernatural, and he was interviewing Jesse DuPlantis, and <laughs> his story was funny. He's, he's a funny guy, but he was just talking about different things, and he was talking about how he had wanted that for so long. He had wanted to have an encounter with God. He had wanted to experience him and, and talk with him. And he was just like, God, why don't you talk to me the way you talk to, uh, you know, all these other preachers and folks. Talk to me. You know, talk to me like that too. I'm, you know, if you're not a respecter of persons, talk to me like you talk to, you know, these people. So that had been his prayer for such a long time, and he was ready. And he was, if I can remember how the story goes, it went something like this. He was saying that he was, I think, at church one night somewhere, and the preacher told him, he was like, okay. He's like, God's been showing me that you've been seeking him about this. And he said he's, he is going to uh, have an encounter with you. He's going to talk to you. And he, and he told him, you know, the, night, the, the, the time of the night that it was going to happen. And he told him that his wife, uh, would not experience the encounter with him. And, and he, he, I mean, the preachers just gave him details of how it was going to play out. So sure enough, this, this one particular night comes up, and him and his wife are in bed, Jesse and his wife are in bed asleep, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jesse, he, he has this, this experience where, like, in their room, in the bedroom, there was this wind that just came out of nowhere, and the wind was blowing up the curtains and moving stuff around. And he said he could even feel it in in himself, inside himself, pulling his skin. And he was just like, "Oh my gosh, what's going on?" 
And all of a sudden, he hears the voice of God, and, and God's like, you know, here I am, look at me. And he said he turned the <laughs> opposite direction of where the voice was coming from. He turned the opposite direction, and he's like facing his wife, and his wife is just asleep. She's out of it. So he's like rocking her, trying to wake her up. And she couldn't wake up. And it was just like what the preacher had said. It was happening during the time of the night that he said. And he said his wife wasn't going to experience it with him. And sure enough, he couldn't get her to wake up. So, <clears throat> so he hears the voice of God talking to him again. And, and instead of getting excited, he freaks out even more. So he's still trying to get his wife to wake up. So finally, one last time, a third time, God says, you, you've been seeking me. Now here I am. Turn around and look at me. And he still wouldn't do it. He just freaked out. And so all of a sudden, everything stopped. The wind stopped. Just He didn't hear the voice no more. He couldn't feel that presence anymore. Everything just stopped. And he looks around, and he's like, oh, no. you know. <laughs> and he's like, look, then finally when his wife did wake up, he was like, you missed it. <laughs> you missed it. You missed this moment. You missed this encounter with God, which really he had missed it too, but, you know. But he was like, you see, that's what you get for being asleep. You missed it. <laughs> but, but my point is, oftentimes, many of us, we want some type of moment to happen. And when the moment arises, we freak out and we're just like, oh, man, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do it, God. I'm scared. <laughs> I can't look at you. <laughs> so, so now you see why I'm questioning you. What are you going to do? You need to be thinking about this. What are you going to do when the moment happens? You can't play hokey pokey. You can't talk the talk and not walk the walk. You can't say you're ready and then when it happens, oh no, God, then you, then you turn the opposite direction just like he did. You turn yourself around, you know. <laughs> so you got to be willing to face this head on, okay? You got to be willing to face this head on. Just like Joshua, you got to have that courage to step forward and be like, what's, what's going on? Whose side you on? You know, <laughs> not take off running. This is the last place I'm going to take you to. It's John chapter 20, and I'm going to wrap this up. <clears throat> John chapter 20. What happens here is this. So Jesus, this is after he's crucified. Uh, he's put in the tomb. We know the story. We hear it every Easter, you know, the third day you know, comes and, 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 and he rises from the grave and, you know, his tomb is empty. Hooray, right? <laughs> it's what we're excited about. Jesus uh, uh, rising from the dead, defeating death, hell, and the grave. It's this big thing, right? And so what he does, what Jesus does when he comes back from the dead and he leaves the tomb, what he decides to do is he decides to uh before he you know completely leaves this earth to be with the father he's like he's 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 wanting to to uh have one more moment with his disciples right he's wanting to show himself unto them privately have this conversation with them behind closed doors before he he leaves and he has this moment with his disciples but the thing is all the disciples show up to this meeting with Jesus, this final meeting with Jesus, except for Thomas. So Jesus decides to make a re-reappearance. <laughs> you know, he decides to try it again so that Thomas can finally get his opportunity to see Jesus one last time. And he, the reason why Thomas didn't show up when the, all the disciples, the other disciples showed up that first time was because of doubt. And a lot of times, you know, fear and doubt can go hand in hand. So I'm using this story because of that, but also because there's something else that I want you to see. And it's right here. Look at verse 26. It says, and after eight days, there's that number eight right the new beginning you have a beginning but then there's a new beginning like let's start this over let's try it again thomas missed out the first time but jesus is like you know what i'm gonna try this one more again <laughs> and i'm gonna give thomas another chance so it says after eight days that that number of new beginnings that number of, of another chance and after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas, 
now with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. So Jesus is saying here, touch my hands where the nail prints are from when I was crucified. Touch my side from where I was pierced by the spear in the side. Touch that. Put your hand in there and see that I'm the real deal. I know you see me, but I want you to really experience this. You're having an encounter with me. I want you to have this experience. Touch these nail prints. Touch my side. Reach out. Don't play hokey pokey with me. I got you here now. So now, come on, go all out and reach. Don't kind of reach and then get scared and, and move your hand because it, it looks weird and it's creepy. Me telling you, thrust your hand into my side, into this, you know, this, this hole in me. Don't freak out. Put your hand in. Put it all in. Thrust your hand in me. I want you all in me no hokey pokey go all in don't be faithless but be in believing and 28 says and thomas answered and said unto him my lord my god my lord my god and that's all i'm saying to you that's all jesus is saying that's all god said i am your lord I am your God, but when do you fully believe it and fully trust in me? Because I'm ready to give you this opportunity. He was saying, trust me. But the way I'm going to get you to trust me is to try me. And the way I'm going to get you to try me is to touch me. Touch me, try me, trust me. Touch me, try me, touch me, try me. Trust me. You've got to trust him. Will you do it this go around? Will you do it this go around? Will you put your hand all in and see that it's really him and that he's really answering your prayer? This Listen, it's coming. I'm telling you, listen, whoever this is for, it's coming. It's coming. It might not be exactly when you expect it. It might not play out exactly how you thought it would. That's besides the point. What are you going to do? Are you ready? All right. That's all, it's all out there now. All right. All right. I'm going to pray us out of here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word. And Lord, I pray that... <laughs> that those that would need this message, Lord, that they would tune in, that they would hear it, and that they would be encouraged to not let fear grip them and to not let doubt consume them, but let them be reminded that if they love you, they've got to know that perfect love casts out fear. They've got to walk in love. They've got to walk in courage. And so I'm encouraging them now, Lord, to seek you and to believe you and to trust you with what's to come. Lord, I pray and believe that soon people are going to walk into new opportunities as well as missed opportunities. And that you will be glorified in the outcome of all of these achieved not missed but achieved opportunities and that your people will be greatly blessed into life-changing situations lord i give you all the praise the glory and the honor in jesus name i pray amen